Hey everybody, today is Saturday, June 22nd, 2024 in sunny San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. If you are new to the channel, beside me here is a scow bow mini cruiser sailboat that I'm building. Basically, my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable, 14-foot sailboat that's watertight and custom built to cross oceans. Today what I'm going to be working on is the main hatch cover. And oh, you haven't seen this yet, check it out. I attached the doghouse with three layers of carbon fiber. And I wanted to use carbon fiber not only because it'll block UV from degrading any of the fiberglass, but it's also lighter and adds more strength than regular fiberglass. It does, as a downside, block some radio signals, GPS, but so much of the deck is not going to have carbon fiber and you got the deadlights here. I'm sure any signals that I need to can sneak out or in. So yeah, I'm going to be making the main hatch cover today. And I've talked a lot about this over the course of this project, but the, the reason I chose a round cover is uh, a largely inspired by Jester, the boat built by Blondie Hasler. He was kind of one of these first pioneers to go across the Atlantic single-handed in a small little boat. And he invented the servo pendulum steering gear. So I always loved his hatch and I wanted to replicate that. Sorry, I'm kind of sweaty. It is the first day of summer has passed and it's hot here, for here at least. It's 81 degrees in the garage and I've been doing some work. Um, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. I'm working on a goal to 10,000 and oh my gosh, we've made it. 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much uh, for everyone who has subscribed. When I started this channel, I thought if I can get at least 3,000 people, I'll be happy to spread the word about uh, small sailboat cruising and crossing oceans. And now with 10,000, couldn't be happier. So, okay, let's get to work. This is the main hatch cover mold for the boat. So this is a male mold and over it, I'm gonna put layers of carbon fiber and fiberglass. And what I need to do now is cover it in some of this flex fix duct tape and then we're gonna wax over that and a big thank you to my friend Rowan who used a laser cutter to cut out a template out of a plywood and then place that on top of foam and then use a bandsaw to cut it all tools that I don't have available here so that was a big help thank you Rowan Next, I'm gonna put some wax on this. All right, my mold now has a liberal application of wax. And this is where I'm gonna do the project. My plan is to do one coating of epoxy mixed with fairing filler, then one chop strand matte layer, and then look at this pile I've got here. I got a couple small pieces to go reinforce where the hinge bolts are gonna come through, and then six ounce carbon fiber, six ounce 10 millimeter foam core, six ounce carbon fiber, six ounce, and then some more chop strand mat that'll just go around the edges to thicken this up. I'm hoping for a final thickness here of about five millimeters. And here's the foam for the core. You can see I've shaped the edges over two inches or 50 millimeters and rounded the side. And so that'll go inside the hatch cover. All right, there's all my layers on. 
plus a layer of peel ply. Now I'm gonna get a piece of plastic and lay it over this and a blanket and maybe some board of wood just to try and press it all down. All right, as promised, I got a picnic blanket over it and a ratchet strap just loosely snugged up on it just to keep it from unfolding from the sides. And then boards of wood and a little bit of weight. Hopefully this turns out right. I don't have a lot of experience making things with male molds. All right, first thing I'm gonna to need to do is cut this to the approximate height I need it to be and then get out this mold. Oh good, I can still see the area where I put the extra reinforcement for the uh, hatch hinge. The rim measurement is about two to three millimeters, depending on where I measure. And I was hoping for five, so I think I'm gonna thicken this up, maybe with a wrap of two layers of 10 ounce and two layers of six ounce might do it. And then I've also prepared to add a handle. Here's a crude drawing, just enough to fit my hand through and here's the little mold I made for that so I'll rest it on here once the rims thickened up and then I'll add these layers of I have six layers of 10 ounce and 6 ounce cloth and then three pieces of synthetic webbing and that should do the trick all right I've given the lip a little sanding to get off any rough spots and I will see you after this lamination there we go, friends. Pretty simple 30 minute layout. I did end up going with two layers of 10 ounce cloth and then two layers of slightly wider six ounce cloth. These are pilot holes and next I'm gonna drill with a quarter inch bit for the fair lead. This custom fair lead my friend Mike, the metal fabricator, made for me. Pretty much a direct copy of what's on the sailboat Baluchon. But this will keep, uh, there's going to be a big deck cleat here. So that would keep a tow line within this area. Or if you anchor, it'll keep the line here and keep it from rubbing up against the deck or the front of the boat. And also when you tie up to the dock, you can just run the line from the cleat through here to the dock. Thought it was pretty cool. Now I'm gonna use this tool I made to get rid of some of the core. All right, it's been eight hours since I thickened the side walls of my hatch cover, and I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get this peel ply off and go straight into adding the handle I was talking about earlier. All right, I'm gonna start to put the handle on. So I got the mold taped on there. And then this is for uh, bedding I'm gonna do for the hinge Mike made me, but I'll show that later. I just finished this layup, and I had to do some creative clamping here. I, I'm not too confident on this. We'll see how it looks tomorrow. It would have been better if I could have leaned this up on its end and worked over the top. 
but I, uh, I think I kind of shot myself in the foot by doing the hinge bedding at the same time. So then I'd had to do everything flat. But we'll see. We'll see. Until tomorrow. All right, it's the next morning. Let's take this off and see what we got. So far, I'm pleasantly surprised. That actually looks like a pretty good layup there. Let's get it cleaned up more. Wow, that actually turned out great. Here's the underside. And then the top. And then over here, the hinge. So my buddy Mike, the metal fabricator, built this part as well. And a lot of engineering went into designing this. Me and also a viewer named Sean, we came up with this design. The pin here is in a slot. On the top of the doghouse, it allows you to lift the whole hatch cover up above that lip that I made and then bend it over and lay it down on the top of the doghouse. So it's a pretty cool design. Another cool feature on these is that we use some security bolts on here. So you have to have a special bit in order to unscrew the pin, at least slow down criminals. This handle is part of securing the hatch as well. So last night I also attached a mounting plate here for a little bow eye that I'm going to put in there. And that'll lock from the hatch to the bow eye. And then in addition to that, inside I epoxied on this backing plate for the bow eye. And then the fourth item I did while epoxying last night was to fill out the uh, hollowed out core I had here with some epoxy. So the main purpose of this handle isn't really a handle to hold on to to raise and lower the hatch, although it is useful for that. I mean, I could have just grabbed the sides pretty easily. This is actually for locking the hatch. And there wasn't room to put a metal pad eye here and through bolt it because it would scratch on the inner lip. So I went with a composite handle and I'll just run like maybe a cable through to that bow eye and lock it. And I know of course, a lot of you may think this is silly. You can just cut this with a saw real quick and get inside or a crowbar, but pretty much any boat you can break into pretty easily. It's just there, you know, the big padlock is just there as a deterrent, right? Something to slow down the criminal. I mean, you see videos in San Francisco of those uh, crime rings breaking into cars. They use the pointed end of a spark plug and just tap the window, get right in, steal your luggage, and they're gone in seconds. So this will actually at least be a little bit better than that. Now that these holes have been filled, I'm just re-drilling them. Okay, now I gotta go up in the foc'sle and make sure there's room for the washers. Oh, yep, that'll work. So there's a dry fit of the bow eye I'm gonna use to lock the hatch. And I put a robust backing plate on it as well so that it could be used to uh, clip into for my harness. Here's a look at the little backing plate. A couple washers and a nut. And I've got a lock washer as well that I can put on. And I even cut the bolt to the perfect length. Okay, I've added some fairing to both edges of the handle just to make it pretty. And now I'm going to go around here where there's still some ugly chop strand mat showing.
Okay, I've just sanded and vacuumed this nice and smooth. And look how good my composite handle turned out. I really love the look of that. Yeah, it's looking good. All right, I've got one last epoxy session to close out this video, and then the hatch will be basically ready for painting. So I need to use this cloth I've prepared to attach the handle for the inside of the hatch. And then I've got a bunch of holes that I need to fill with epoxy, um, such as these uh, holes for mounting the, the hinge, as well as some others. And I think right now I'll drill for the tube that'll allow the reefing line for the mainsail to go into the doghouse and then I'll install that. This is a tube that I made in a previous video which has to fit in here and it's pretty much perfectly sized to fit the uh, the line I have for reefing and you may remember I have one over here as well for the main sheet. So the main sheet's routed through here into the main cabin. Okay, epoxy session done. I got the handle on here now. Three layers of six ounce and then peel ply. And then I got my reefing line tube in there. You can see a couple fiddles inside I put there. Uh, I cut them out of some scraps. And that'll be cool because I can, uh, I realized I can just coil the reef line inside and store it up forward here in the doghouse. That way I don't have to hang it. And I got the hinge holes there with some epoxy in them. And the same for the little bow eye there that I'm gonna to use to lock the hatch. And I filled the four holes here as well for this part of the hatch hinge. Now it's just the race to get the boat ready for fairing and painting. I got a bunch more holes to drill and fill and then attach some handrails, port and starboard. And then I think we're ready for fairing and paint. Okay, my friends, that is it for this time. Of course, if you enjoy the project and you want to support, there's links in the description for that. Patreon members get to watch 24 hours in advance, and those who've joined up who have helped me out greatly, thank you. Remember to please give a thumbs up and leave a friendly comment. I will see you next time. Support our yes. preparations are getting underway. Hey, uh, what's that? Home. Home, get back to your station or I'll have you shot from his ear. Well, shoot some. Hey, we did it.